Thank you for joining and viewing the presentation. I'm Joe Krieger. I am a fetal cardiac sonographer at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. And this presentation is based on our fetal cardiac protocol at Children's. There are many different ways to scan a fetal heart. Uh, and this is just an example of how we perform fetal cardiac scans at Children's of Atlanta. And so during the presentation, I'll be going over a detailed review of our fetal echo protocol here at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. I'll also be going over how to obtain all the necessary views for a comprehensive fetal cardiac scan. And during the presentation, I'll also uh, highlight the image alignment and optimization tips necessary to make your scan as clear and, and diagnostic as possible. Now I wanted to highlight some changes that the AIUM instituted in their standards and they collaborated with the American Society of ECHO, ASE, in 2020 and they came up with uh, a revision for the basic approach for the cardiac scan in the fetus. And what they did was they made it part of required imaging for the branch pulmonary artery bifurcation, three vessel view, uh, including the three vessel tracheal view, short axis views of the ventricles for low and high outflow tracts, as well as the long axis sagittal views, obviously if clinically relevant. And these were, these were added as required views for the basic approach, including color Doppler ultrasound. Uh, they did not include the spectral Doppler assessment as required. Uh, typically, our uh, fetal cardiac scans happen in the mid to late second trimester, which is well after 20 weeks gestation. There are some early uh, gestational scans that we do, but not before 14 weeks. And so ALARA is still in effect. We still uh, maintain good use of, of ALARA in terms of our um, power out, uh, output in the ultrasound machines. We want to minimize the amount of color and spectral Doppler that we employ in these cases. But at the same time, these uh, it's completely safe at this these gestational ages for these fetuses. And it's, it's a really important part of these scans. And so as part of the societal guidelines, you can see the difference between the two sets of guidelines. You see ISUOG basically the same views although all transverse views starting in the abdomen and then coming up above the diaphragm to the four chamber in the outflow tracts three vessel uh, three vessel trachea and also the v of the arches here and no sagittal views there whereas in the aium asc guidelines you see that the uh, sagittal views through the fetus are depicted here and here with the arches and the bicable view shown as well and also adding in the short axis ventricular views that are not shown here, but that's also part of the, the, the standards uh, for the AIUM and ASE guidelines. And so your approach to fetal echo should be a fetal cardiology centric approach, which means typically we use a segmental approach to look at cardiovascular structure. We put the heart together as puzzle pieces, segments, from the atria to the ventricles and the ventricles to the outflow tracts and the arteries. And so that's our segmental approach to looking at fetal cardiovascular structure. And if you add this in as part of your OB's uh, fetal survey, you wanna make sure that you dedicate plenty of time and attention to the heart, the cardiovascular structure, so that you don't miss anything. You wanna use appropriate ultrasound equipment. Standard ultrasound machine is fine. You wanna use that uh, curvilinear OB abdominal probe. 3 to 10 megahertz is best. And you want to use start out with the highest possible frequency and then dial it back if necessary. This gives the optimal two-dimensional grayscale imaging. And then occasionally you want to use a sector probe for continuous wave Doppler. Some curvilinear probes, some vendors allow their curve probes to have continuous wave Doppler. We have one of those systems in our, in our institution. And then of course, you want to create a cardiac preset, which means minimal temporal smoothing you want to you want to minimize the temporal smoothing and you want to make sure that the narrow the sector is narrow and the color box region of interest is narrow so that you can have the highest frame rates when imaging the fetal heart and this is the kicker real-time cine clips is important specifically for sweeps and watching the heart the heart is a dynamic moving structure 
uh, and it needs to be imaged as such. More than five seconds is best. Typically between three and five is okay. We use sometimes seven seconds in our, uh, in our scans. So initially what you need to do is orient yourself to the fetus and the very first thing that you do when you start scanning is you determine the fetal presentation. And I've shown three different examples here, but what this really means is you need to orient yourself to the fetus so that you can then establish laterality, left and right in the fetus. So our first step in doing this is to place the transducer in a sagittal format with a marker at 12 o'clock toward the maternal head, uh, just at or below the level of the navel. And this is an example of how your image would look should the fetus be in a cephalic presentation, longitudinal lie facing up. The head again is down toward the cervix and the baby is facing up spine down and this is the picture you would get. We then rotate the transducer 90 degrees counterclockwise where the marker would be pointing at the maternal right side. And in this case, this fetus that is in this uh, cephalic presentation, vertex presentation, chest up, we will see that the left side of the fetus is here on the left of the screen, the right side is here on the right. And the reason we know that is because we are picturing the fetus in this, in this particular left-sided panel as the legs or the bottom half of the fetus going into the ultrasound monitor. So if you can picture the, the head of the baby coming out of the monitor, you can evaluate the position of the contents in the fetal chest based on that knowledge of whether the baby is in a cephalic presentation or in this case, a breech presentation on the right side of the screen where you have the baby's head going into the monitor, feet are coming out, and you can physically understand just by picturing the fetus in this way where left and right is in the fetus. And so in the case where we have a fetus in a transverse lie, we will still place the transducer in the same position, uh, sagittal on maternal abdomen with the marker pointed at mom's head, 12 o'clock. And this is the picture that you would see if the fetus is in a transverse lie, a cross section uh, or short axis through the fetal abdomen or thorax. We then still rotate the transducer counterclockwise 90 degrees. And in this case, it'd still be pointing at the maternal right side. And this should show the fetus in a longitudinal format, whether the head is to the right or the left. In this case, the head in this fetus is pointed toward the maternal left side. And so we've annotated that up here in the left upper panel of the screen. The next step would be to rotate back clockwise to 12 o'clock orientation. We initially started out in the mater on the maternal abdomen, and this would give us this transverse view through the fetal thorax. And in this case, since the head is pointed toward the maternal left side, in this case, the heart would be pointed left down on the fetus, down in this direction is the left side of the fetus. The spine again is back here. This is the front of the fetus and at the top of the screen is the right side of the fetus. In this case, we're picturing the fetal head into the screen, as you see here, head into the screen, feet out of the screen. This gives us that orientation in a transverse lie. Some very important points and considerations during your scan. You wanna establish the presentation and laterality in the fetus and move on, continue your scan. You've already established where the fetus is laying within the maternal abdomen and where the cardiac structure lies within the fetal chest. And you want to use that established situs as a guide for your scan. And so when you're looking for left or right sided structures, 
whether it's cardiac structures or extracardiac structures, you've got that situs as a guide to tell what is left and right on the fetus. And the landmarks that you will see both in the heart and outside of the heart, like the trachea and the stomach, are perfect landmarks to establish the situs and sidedness of structures within the fetus, whether it's within the heart or within the fetal body. And most importantly, you want to produce identifiable standard views. And this is so critically important for a successful scan. Now, when we start out in the transverse views through the fetal thorax, you want to first align the fetal spine as perpendicular as possible to the plane of incination. You will then rotate 90 degrees from that sagittal view in our case at Children's Healthcare Atlanta, we rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees, and this will allow us to obtain the fetal thorax in a proper standard format. In this case, we're seeing one rib on either side of the fetal thorax, and in this case, we can see that the four chamber view is shown well from the base to the apex all the way through. And we can see a really nice four chamber view of the fetal heart. It's important for me to emphasize the fact that the sagittal fetal body plane and the transverse fetal body plane do not line directly up with the cardiac short axis and cardiac long axis planes uh, of the heart. And this is important because when you're trying to evaluate structures that are in the long axis in the fetus, uh, specifically structures like the bicapal view uh, shown here and the aortic and ductal arches here, you will notice that the by cable view is yes, it is along the body, uh, the sagittal body plane of the fetus, but the aortic and ductal arches are not. They're slightly rotated, almost in the cardiac short axis, which is just clockwise, slight rotation, a couple of degrees off of the the sagittal fetal body plane. In contrast to that, the transverse uh, fetal body plane shows in the thorax the four chamber view and the outflow tracks, the three vessel view and the three vessel tracheal view here is shown. And those views are also slightly off of the true transverse fetal body plane. Slight rotation again to get the V of the ductal and aortic arches up in the upper thorax. The four chamber view as well, slightly rotated. So this is important to keep in mind when doing your scan. And again, when you're doing these uh, views, you may need to kind of slight rotations here and there, perform these rotations just to get things to look quite right. Now, it's important also to know that when you're imaging the cardiac anatomy in the fetus, uh, you should try to gently slide in the direction of a sweep when you're doing these sweeps through the structures, rather than just sticking the probe in one spot and tilting as you would during a transthoracic echo. And so if you're an OB imager or a, a um, maternal fetal imager who's used to imaging the fetus, you know that you need to translate the, the probe across the maternal abdomen. And in this case, when you find the correct view that you need to be in, these slight movements of the probe sliding ever so slightly in the direction that you're going to sweep is important to show properly the angles that you need to show of the cardiac structure. And so here we are, we're going to start out with the fetus in the, in the sagittal plane, and we're gonna align the fetal spine perpendicular to the plane of incination. And, and shown here, what we're doing is we're going to translate the transducer, slide the transducer down toward, in this case, the level of the diaphragm uh, and transect it this way. And then we'll rotate and get our four chamber view. And from that sweep, that can give us the proper angle to show the four chamber view in the correct format, all the way from the base to the apex. In this example, showing how you can see the entire cardiac long axis from back here, the left atrium where the pulmonary veins come in, all the way through the crux of the heart down to the apex. Perfect example of that.
So some very important tips on image optimization, the very first of which would be to make sure that the patient is, is comfortable, uh, have her in a position where she's going to be comfortable throughout the entirety of the exam, sometimes taking up to an hour. You want to use the entire maternal abdomen. Some people find a picture of what they want to see and they stay in that spot. And so it's important to move throughout around the maternal abdomen to get different angles of certain things. And also you want to use a little bit of pressure. This is an example of putting pressure to get the heart closer to the transducer and to put the heart into the focal zone. And this clarifies the image, allows for a higher uh, temporal and spatial resolution uh, to make the image uh, really clear so that you can identify any congenital heart disease. At the same time, you want to start with a high frequency and then dial it back throughout the exam if needed. And you want to decrease your depth and narrow the sector. Also utilize zoom or resolution uh, feature, which I've shown there, and minimize the color Doppler box to the region of interest you want to image. And this is because all of these things in yellow raise the frame rates. And the key is to keep the frame rates above 25 hertz as a minimum 20 to 25 hertz, absolute minimum, and you want to keep it above that. So now we start our fetal echo protocol in the transverse views, and specifically we start out in the fetal abdomen. We look at the at the level of the stomach, we look at the abdominal situs, we then sweep up into the chest, looking at the four-chamber view. We spend a lot of time here making sure that we look at the morphology of things, the crux of the heart, make sure the atrioventricular valves are seen and are normal, two outflow tracts crossing, RV outflow tract and LV outflow tract, look at the pulmonary veins, and then we use spectral and color Doppler to evaluate the inflows and outflows and ventricular septal integrity, pulmonary venous inflow into the left atrium. We then sweep up to the aortic and ductal arches, make sure that they arch to the left and form a V, left of the trachea, and we follow that up with color and spectral Doppler as well. Most importantly though, is we use cine clips for the whole part of the study, and more than three seconds is better. Uh, we use more than five seconds, five to seven seconds at Children's of Atlanta, and this just makes for a, a better uh, c uh, collection of information. Each of these clips can be frozen and scrolled through and reviewed uh, during the review process. And so this is critically important for these fetal cardiac scans. And so here we are in this transverse abdominal view, this fetus that's in a cephalic presentation. You can see here in the beginning uh, of the sweep, we have the portal sinus here with the umbilical vein, joins the hepatic veins, joins the IVC. You have the stomach here on the left, the spleen is behind the stomach here. And then if you look, as we sweep up into the chest, the cardiac mass, the apex is pointed to the left in the patient. So this is levocardia. And as we, and as you freeze the image, you can see clearly the abdominal contents uh, shown here in different color schemes. This is the liver on the right. The IVC is up inside of the liver on the right off of the spine. This is important. The aorta is just to the left of midline on the spine. Here you have the stomach and the spleen behind the stomach. And so these are clearly imaged specifically when you freeze and you scroll through and you can see these structures within the fetal abdomen. Some important points to note, as you are scanning up above the diaphragm and up into the heart to transect the heart in a transverse view, you can see how each of these levels of sweeping up through the heart as you're moving up from the diaphragm, which is at this level, up into the four chamber view as shown here, and then just above that at the outflow tracks, and then even more uh, cephalad in the fetus to the three vessel view here, and then slight clockwise rotation in this case to show the V of the aortic and ductal arches. These are all at different levels in the fetal thorax. And rather than just tipping the probe cephalad in the fetus, you'd want to make these slight sweeps, slight movement of the, of the transducer uh, toward the 
the upper part of the chest toward the um, more cephalad on the fetus to get these different views of these structures. So critically important. Now the most fundamental part of performing fetal echo to identify congenital heart disease and abnormalities within the fetal heart is morphologic assessment of structures or understanding the, the normal structure and identifying what is abnormal and in, in the way that things look in terms of their features within the cardiac structure. And in this case, we're showing both ventricles, the right ventricle here on the left and the left ventricle here on the right, and we can see that there are stark differences between the two. We have this uh, in the right ventricular morphology, we have a ventricular infundibular fold, this, this thick fold of muscle that separates the tricuspid valve and the RV alpha tract, the pulmonary valve in this case. Another pretty obvious feature when you're looking at the fetal heart with echo is that you have these chordal attachments from the tricuspid valve to the septum, and that's something that can easily be evaluated, as well as the moderator band, the most identifiable structure that makes the RV what it is. These papillary muscles are all throughout the RV body, specifically on the septum and the free wall, even attached to the moderator band here. And the tricuspid valve, again, is a little bit more apically displaced than the mitral valve. In contrast, the left ventricle is a smooth walled, mostly smooth, with fine apical trabeculations, no moderator band here. Uh, we have two distinct papillary muscles that are situated along the free wall of the left ventricle, and the mitral valve here is a two leaflet valve that is in fibrous continuity with the semilunar valve, which is the aortic valve in this case. And so those are the features that make the ventricles uh, unique in their own and identifiable on the fetal echo by just looking at the features uh, in, in your four chamber view. And here is the four chamber view, arguably the most important view of the entire exam, although adding in the outflow tracks and the arches are just as important. But you can see a lot in this view. You First of all, you see the lungs here on either side. So this is right. This is left, this baby is in a cephalic presentation. You have the spine back here and anterior. So once you find your compass points, you wanna make sure that you see the morphologic right ventricle anterior, okay? And it is attached to the morphologic right atrium. Tricuspid valve here more apically displaced than the mitral valve on the left here with the left ventricle. Both of these ventricles should be proportional in size. You should have equal sizes. Sometimes in late gestation, late third trimester, you'll have slight right heart enlargement. This is normal, uh, but the moderator band in the right ventricle uh, is here. You can see that as a defining feature of the right ventricle, some septal attachments of the tricuspid valve here. The foramen of a valley, the, fl uh, the flap of the foramen, should be bowing into the left atrium a third to a half of the way into the left atrium. That's a normal appearance. You have pulmonary veins draining here into the left atrium. This left atrium connects to the morphologic left ventricle. Again, smooth walled, no septal attachments from the mitral valve. Papillary muscles here along the free wall, except the, the chordal attachments from the mitral valve. And you can clearly see that the ventricular function is normal. And again, this is the aorta here pulsating on the uh, right, uh, the left side of the spine, just to the left of midline. This is a normal appearing four chamber view. As we sweep up to the outflow tracts, you wanna make sure that the outflow tracts are proportional in size uh, with the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary valve annulus ever so slightly larger than the aorta. And I've, I've highlighted here that you wanna see the outflow tracts cross. Here's the LV outflow tract, there's the RV outflow tract, and this just confirms that there is no transposition. This is, a, this is a normal appearance when you have the LV outflow tract and the RV outflow tract crossing. This is a feature that you wanna see once you sweep more cephalad in the fetus. Uh, at the same time, you're looking at the ventricular septum, making sure that it's intact uh, all the way up to the outflow tracks uh, with 2D, and this helps you to understand that there's no large defects with any, any um, 
semilunar valve override of the defects, which can be seen in defects such as tetralogy for low and truncus arteriosus. And I wanted to put this in here because this is important in learning how to measure the semilunar valve annulus and the uh, atrioventricular valve annuli, and specifically uh, tricuspid valve annulus and mitral valve annulus. These are all measured during, in terms of the AV valves when they are at their max opening, which is uh, early to mid diastole. You can see the hinge points of the valves, and so we'll measure hinge point to hinge point, internal edge to internal edge for the AV valve measurements. And then semilunar valve measurements, this is the aortic valve, again, hinge point to hinge point at the valve's maximal opening. And so this is the correct method to do that. Now, earlier in the presentation, I mentioned the fact that we would have to slightly rotate or angulate the views from that transverse view and even from the sagittal view to get certain structures into plane or into the image. Uh, and this is an example of that from that long axis of the LV, you would slightly rotate or angulate to get uh, the transverse arch and ductal arch and the three vessel view and three vessel tracheal view as you go up into the upper thorax. And so I wanted to emphasize that here, and this depicts a transverse view just showing the fetus in a longitudinal format, but how we go from the four chamber view transecting the heart at this level we're going to sweep up into the upper chest, uh, moving the transducer, it's more cephalite in the fetus to show these images in the upper chest as we're moving up past the alpha tracts and, the, and up to the arches. And this is an example of that. This, this particular view shows how we go from the four chamber view to the alpha tracts and then up three vessel view there and transition to the V of the ductal and aortic arches at the end of the scan. There's a lot going on here. And if you imagine acquiring this in a five second clip or stenny clip, you can see everything within the chest, including the lungs, the, there's the trachea and the, and the carina with the bronchi there shown. All of these structures are in transition as you're sweeping up and you can see these structures clearly as you freeze and sweep and scroll through the sweep uh, in review of this. Now as we're moving up the chest to these views, we're going to settle in on a view and we're going to watch it and interrogate it here with a nice long cine clip looking at the structures. You can clearly see all of the structures in this example where you have this is the right side marked here and you have the SVC on the right you're having the aorta is next and the pulmonary artery here, nice bifurcation of the left and right pulmonary arteries. This is part of the right bronchus here shown. That's part of the left bronchus. That's beyond the carina down past the bifurcation. And you're actually seeing part of the descending aorta here behind. And this is just an example of how clear the thymus can show up in front of the vessels. And so this is another important feature to try to identify in the fetus and this obviously perfect view with the chest up and a nice clear image through the upper thorax of the, of the fetus. Great example of a three vessel view. From that three vessel view as you sweep more cephalad and again a slight angulation you see there the pulmonary artery branches and as you angulate slightly and cephalad sweep ever so slightly more cephalad you get this V of the ductal and aortic arches and, in, and indeed it, it, it forms a V uh, and circled there next to that V is the trachea and what you need to note is that the trachea is a midline structure and it's the landmark to show you what is on either side obviously the SVC here on the right side in front of the trachea that's depicted as, as being on the right side of the, the fetus the left side of the fetus is here and both the ductal and aortic arches arch to the left of this trachea, which makes this a normal arrangement of a left aortic arch and left ductus arteriosus. So moving on to this four chamber view, in terms of looking at the atrioventricular septum and the ventricular septum, the atrial septum, you really wanna to try to align these cardiac septa 
the atrial and ventricular septum perpendicular to the plane of incination as possible to evaluate for ventricular and atrial septal defects. Specifically at the crux of the heart, you want to really closely evaluate that to make sure that the insertions of the AV valve leaflets are such that you can see the crux intact. You want to look at the ventricular septum all the way up to the base of the heart and do this little sweep up to the alpha tracts with 2D and with color. You can do it in separate uh, Sene clips with just 2D and with color. This I just wanted to show this uh, example. And what I've done is I've highlighted the fact that the Nyquist limit is turned lower than what we would typically default at with a machine. You want it to be around 30 or lower to elicit any kind of shunting in the ventricular septum. Make sure the gain settings are appropriate so that you don't have excessive color bleed, but you do show this low velocity shunting because the ventricular pressures, interventricular pressures in the fetus are equal in normal cases. So you won't show ventricular shunting if you don't have the Nyquist limit or the color uh, scale this, at this level. Again, I've turned the color scale very low. Uh, at this level here is good. Any lower than that would just be too much bleeding into the actual muscle. But this is to detect for any elusive smaller defects near the apex of the heart, near the, near the apical part of the septum, uh, and along the, 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 the length of the septum. And this is a really nice sweep down toward the diaphragm, you're starting to see the, the right ventricle kind of disappear there as we sweep toward the diaphragm. You really want to do nice slow sweeps to evaluate for any presence of ventricular septal defects. And again, back up uh, all the way through, um, sweeping the heart all the way through the box there, S nice slow sweep from the diaphragmatic surface all the way up to the outflow tracts, keeping the box in place. Again, a low scale color Doppler to evaluate this. This is an example of using power Doppler. You can use power Doppler for this as well. Uh, and it's just as sensitive as fundamental color Doppler. And then back up to the atria. Again, you want to use this low scale color Doppler, low Nyquist limit color Doppler to evaluate pulmonary venous drainage into the left atrium here pretty good example of showing three of these pulmonary veins. You have one here, these two right veins, one here and one here, draining from the right lung. Obviously, this is the right lung here on that side of the spine. This left lung over here on the left side of the spine, on the left hemithorax, uh, we're seeing one pulmonary vein here. Uh, you can usually sweep through and see all four pulmonary veins in a nice clear example, but it also shows the unrestrictive right atrium to left atrium shunting as depicted as this red flow here through this foraminal flap and this is the normal shunting pattern that you should see in a normal fetal heart interrogating these pulmonary veins with uh, pulse wave spectral doppler this is the normal pattern for that you shouldn't really have any atrial reversal in a normal situation and the velocity should be at around this level 20 maybe 30 in a normal case. So we talked about earlier needing to move the probe along the maternal abdomen to get the things lined up in a better way to interrogate and to see structures. Well, this is an example of translating the transducer to align the atrioventricular inflows, the mitral and tricuspid valve inflows uh, into a parallel format so that you can more accurately evaluate the inflows and the outflow tract flows with color and spectral Doppler. And so by doing this, you can align up the AV valve inflow in this case, here the mitral valve we're interrogating, and you can see the angle of the cursor is perfectly in line with the mitral valve inflow. And when we interrogate these inflows, they're more accurately depicted uh, the waveforms are more clear to see, and you can clearly see that the E wave and A wave are shown nicely. And of course, uh, different factors contribute to whether you see a monophasic or biphasic mitral and or a, uh, tricuspid valve inflow. But this is a great example of how you can line these things up and get more accurate information with alignment being proper. 
Just as important as alignment for the AV valve inflows is uh, simulator valve or outflow tract outflows. And here's an example of the left ventricular outflow tract being lined up nicely for Doppler interrogation. Again, you want to have it lined up as, as uh, parallel as possible with the plane of incination. And you also want to, now the outflow tracts are at different uh, angles. And obviously this is the LV outflow tract here. The RV outflow tract would be this way, running perpendicular to the plane of incination. And so to get this picture, I would have translated around to the front of the fetus and gotten uh, the pulmonary outflow to RV outflow tract more parallel with the plane of incination to get a better and more accurate tracing as well. But this is just as important as lining up the AV inflows. And a lot of movement needs to be uh, done on, on the sonographer's behalf to line these things up, especially with a very active fetus. We use the cardiac to thoracic uh, size ratio. In this case, we use the area of the heart uh, against the area of the thorax, the upper chest, w at the level of the four chamber view, and it should be about the a third, the heart should be about a third of the internal size of the chest uh, or less. And so anything more than 0.3 or a third of the, uh, the volume of the chest would be considered uh, enlarged. So the three-vessel tracheal view, we've gone from that three-vessel view up to the three-vessel three tracheal view again. We've shown the V of the three-vessel tracheal view. We've swept up cephalad to get this view. And with color Doppler, it should be the same color in both of these arches. And so what we're seeing is, in this case, this is shown as, you know, the top of the sector is anterior on the fetus. This is posterior. Flow should be going in this direction through both of these arches and so they're both showing up as a blue color in this V and that's normal. What you need to keep in mind though, what needs to be kept in mind is this is not always going to be that way. So here you see again a nice normal blue color. Again the front of the fetus is here, this is posterior, so you should have anagrade flow through both the aortic and ductal arches here shown in some cases, in this case, the fetus, the front of the fetus is here, and this is posterior back here, and so what you'll have is red. But note that they're both red. There may be a little transition through this ductal arch here showing just flow from the ductus turning into the descending aorta here. So there's a little blue flicker there. But keep your eye in the area of the transverse and the distal duct here and they should be the same color pattern and there should be very minimal diastolic flow signal in either one of those arches. This is an example of how we have things aligned in a way that shows the ductal and aortic arches in a sort of perpendicular plane to the plane of incination. And the problem we run into with the color Doppler is we're seeing one color uh, blue here in the pulmonary artery uh, in the aorta, I mean, and in the pulmonary artery, we have red. And if you're not careful in the alignment, you may think that this is abnormal, having blue flow in the aorta when it should be red or matching with the, the other vessel. They're not the same color, and so it's important to try to align the vessels so that you're seeing the same color in both and more accurately depict what the flow patterns are within those vessels. Again, you want to follow that up with spectral Doppler to confirm that the direction of flow and the velocities are appropriate for that particular structure. After completing our transverse views through the fetal thorax, we're going to rotate around to the sagittal views, the long axis views, showing uh, in this view the short axes of the ventricles to look at ventricular function and, and the ventricular septal integrity as well, the ventricular sizes. It also allows us to see the aortic valve in a short axis format. In some cases we can see it clear enough to, to tell whether or not it's a trileaflet normal valve. Uh, shows the atrioventricular valves, the mitral and tricuspid valves face on or on FOS, the morphology of those valves, papillary muscles within the left ventricle, their arrangement. It also shows the ductal and aortic arches with slight angulation. You can see those clearly 
and then the long axis of the aortic arch and proximal descending aorta, and also a long axis of the bicaval view, which shows the IVC and the SVC entering right atrium. Cephalic presentation in this fetus, spine down, chest up, and so we're seeing two things here. We're seeing the right atrium with the IVC draining into the right atrium from the abdomen here. Here's the plane of the diaphragm. Again, the IVC coming up past the diaphragm into the right atrium, and you're seeing almost the entire aortic arch and proximal descending aorta all the way down past the diaphragm. And this sagittal view, slightly angulated, you're not seeing the SVC here because it's a little bit out of plane, but you can clearly see the innominate vein above the aortic arch, some of the aortic arch branching vessels here. We have the, the innominate and the parotid here in the left subclavian. Nice, clear view of that. And so this is a critical image to show for these structures. Now I put this, this diagram, this, this illustration in here uh, to show how, in my opinion, it is easiest, the method that is easiest to get the long axis view of the aortic arch and the ductal arches. And so this is a depiction of a maternal abdomen. This is her right side, this is her left side. This is the amniotic sac with the fetus. Here's the placenta, fetus's spine is up. Uh, these are the arms in cross-section, these are ribs. And so this is the V of the ductal and aortic arches in the upper thorax. And so as we're scanning from this side of the maternal abdomen, we can see this view. And so this is what we're getting when we're scanning this way. And we see the V of the, of the ductal and aortic arches here. And in order to get the, a nice long axis view of the aortic and ductal arches, we're gonna to need to translate the transducer in a way that we move it to align this V within the sector in a parallel format with the sector, the center of the sector, the V is pointed to the center of the sector, whether it's uh, in the inverted, where you have the uh, an anteriorly facing fetus and you have the V facing the other way, or in this case, with the spine up. You can always align this in a way that will get the V in a parallel format. And then from there, you're gonna rotate your transducer to transect, in this case, the aortic arch in a nice long axis format. This is almost always achievable in these uh, cases when the fetus is in a good position and the spine does not obscure the long axis of these vessels. And so this is the method that I find most reliable in achieving this particular view of the aortic and ductal arches. Long axis ductal arch view here. The appearance of the ductal arch is, is, is much different than that of the aortic arch. The aortic arch has, has a more gradual arch and it has um, arch branches coming off of it. You have the, the carotids, uh, the nominate artery and the subclavian coming off of the aortic arch. It's not uncommon that you may see in some cases with coarctation or other abnormalities, some similar, or some uh, arch vessels coming off of this distal ductal arch here, but this uh, ductal arch has more of a, an acute angle and you can see here the LPA coming off as well here. And so this is the appearance of a long axis of the ductal arch and you can put color on that and it should be an anti-grade flow pattern. You should not have any significant diastolic, uh, residual diastolic flow here during diastole, any integrate or retrograde flow in diastole. Um, with spectral Doppler, you're seeing a monophasic and all integrate with slight little bit of diastolic integrate flow, which is typical for the ductal arch as well. Different angle of the ductal arch, and this actually shows the isthmus of the aorta here. This is another area where we're gonna to try to really look closely to rule out any kind of narrowing of the isthmus of the aorta, rule out coarctation. And this is a good example of how you can see both of the arches have nice normal anti-grade flow. Uh, in this case, going down on the screen, it's blue, and there's no acceleration or um, continuation of diastolic flow or diastolic runoff. This view also allows for us to see 
the ventricles and short axis. And what is being done here is a slight little sweep down toward the apical portion of the ventricles. You can see the ventricles getting smaller. Papillary muscles here in the left ventricle shown nicely. Normally spaced two papillary muscles. Ventricular septum looks like it's pretty much intact. We haven't used color Doppler. That's coming later. But the RV and the LV function is good and the sizes are appropriate. Again, this is the plane of the diaphragm here. As we sweep cephalad, or not cephalad, but more toward the base of the heart, you're actually seeing this turns into the mitral valve. You have two uh, leaflets of the mitral valve, the anterior leaflets. There is not a cleft in here. There's no bridging leaflet, so this is not an AV canal defect. And you can start to see the tricuspid valve as well. Some of the attachments are to the septum here. Continue to sweep toward the base of the heart. You're seeing the aortic valve in cross section and short axis. You can see three leaflets in that valve. The flap of the foramen valley is clearly seen bowing into the left atrium, a normal feature. Uh, left atrium, right atrium here, tricuspid valve, and then RV outflow tract seen in its entirety. You can see the uh, membrane is part of the ventricular septum there nicely shown. Now, you're going to follow up all of that with a nice long sweep with low scale color Doppler. Keep the box in place and try to sweep the heart, uh, focusing with the ventricular septum in the middle of the region of interest box to make sure that you're looking for any kind of ventricular septal defects from base to apex. Really nice sweep. Back up again toward the base of the heart, focusing on the membranous septum at the end of that sweep. It's again really close to the aortic valve where the aortic valve transitions on the side of the tricuspid valve in the right ventricle. That uh, area here at the end of the sweep is the membranous septum where we most commonly see ventricular septal defects. Another view, the bicaval view here, it's another sagittal view. This is a true sagittal view through the, through the fetal um, chest and abdomen along the sagittal body plane again of the fetus here shown. It shows the SVC coming into the right atrium as well as the IVC. Uh, this is part of the ductal, this is part of the umbilical vein coming into where the ductus venosus would be. Really nice um, delineation of where the diaphragm is and the lung here and the liver here, and then clearly shown is a nice image of the thymus gland, which sits anterior and really more superior in the fetal chest, anterior to the heart. It's another feature that you want to try to see in, that, uh, in the transverse views as well. So now I've, I've shown this view only to show in a transverse format what the umbilical vein looks like coming into the portal sinus here. Uh, and really looking for the ductus venosus. A lot of people use this format to interrogate the ductus venosus. It's easier to find the ductus venosus in some cases in this, transver in this uh, transverse abdominal view. But my preference and the way that I teach is to try to get the um, umbilical vein going through the liver here and the ductus venosus in a sagittal view. It aligns that ductus venosus in a better uh, way so that you can get a clearer interrogation with spectral Doppler. It lines it up nicely. You can adjust your angle better to show velocities and the presence of any reversal, which would be abnormal in this case. This is again um, walking it down from the umbilical vein, looking at the umbilical vein tracing within the intrahepatic portion of the umbilical vein, and then going down toward where the acceleration of the ductus venosus flow starts. And that is the textbook ductus venosus profile. The cord, we want to get a section of the cord away from the fetus. And so sort of mid cord, you're going to align again these vessels in more of a parallel with the plane of insonation format so that you can properly evaluate the flow patterns more properly aligned with the um, Doppler um, cursor here. And so that gives a nice signal looking for any abnormal flows. Now I put these in because this is part of a fetal cardiac scan, even though these are maternal fetal and OB uh, 
biometric measurements, we still have to know the size of the fetus in relation to the size of the cardiac structures. And so this is an example of a proper BPD uh, of the, of the, the skull. Uh, here is the um, head circumference, and this is abdominal circumference taken at the level where it should be taken, and the femur length. And so these uh, comprise all the measurements that we need to get a good uh, um, fetal size and fetal weight in order to um, calculate our um, z-scores that we use for the structures that we've measured within the heart. So some take-home points for the presentation. You want to make sure again that you use the entire maternal abdomen and translate the transducer to get the angles that you need. Uh, again, don't just stay in one spot if you see the views that you like you may find a better angle in a different part of the fetal of the maternal abdomen and so again also with uh, mobile fetuses fetuses that, that are moving actively um, you may need to do this uh, critically important is to optimize your image clarity to maximize the detection of congenital heart disease very important specifically in those cases where you have uh, polyhydramnios or other things that can cause the heart to be uh, difficult to image. You want to maximize as much as you can, narrow the sector, zoom up the heart, uh, and just make things as clear as possible using the highest frequency as possible and then dialing it back if necessary. Standard orthogonal views, all of the views I've shown are proper views uh, used in conventional um, fetal echocardiography and it's important to try to replicate those views. That's the best way to show the cardiac structure uh, and, the, and the alignment of uh, images for interrogation, and specifically in Doppler interrogation, you need to have the, the images aligned appropriately so that you yield the best information and the most accurate information for Doppler. Thank you very much. Uh, Appreciate your attendance and, and attention to this, uh, and please leave comments if you would like to see more content. Thank you.